Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr. And I'm Beth Ellicott. And you're listening to midweek version of the Fiber Talk uh, podcast that we do twice a week for needlework artists. Last, last one of the one. year. Last one. Yep. Yep. Last one. Oh. This will be the last, the last new show Wednesday or Sunday until January five. Wednesday, January five, we're going to resume. So, um, last podcast today. Uh, I'll probably do some Sunday um, encore things. And to, uh, through the holidays, but um, this is it. Gonna take a break. Need a yeah. break. It, yep. Yeah. I, I say gonna take a break, but uh, we're recording on Monday, and then we have four podcasts to record this week <laughs> with guests. <so. laughs> yeah, yeah. You're gonna take a break after we do those. Right, so. yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh. Yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, last one for the win- no, so there won't be any Wednesday shows. Not going to do it. There's no encore shows to do for Wednesdays, so there won't be any Wednesday shows until the fifth. And I'll do encore shows on Sundays, uh, two or three Sundays, whatever it is. And then tonight uh, we're not going to do a thread talk with Kathy Ray. Uh, we're going to do uh, just stitch and chat tonight. So Jennifer, Beth, and I. Um, just going to yak for an hour and wish everybody a Merry Christmas and move on. So, right. Um, right. Join us at eight right. o'clock. I, you know, I downplay that like it's not a big deal, but no, it's always fun. So join us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We always have a good time. Yeah. Always yep. have fun. So we do. And then Kathy Ray and Kathy Ray is going to come back in January then. Yes. The third, uh, third Wednesday in January, we'll have thread talk with Kathy uh, back, back in action. Yep. Excellent. Now, you had found this one, Hancock's of Paducah. I did some business with them. I bought some things from them. That's a, a good shop uh, uh-huh. in Paducah, Kentucky. You you found this with the uh, tornado thing. Yes. Um, actually, what I was I asked Manette, um, who is a guest. We, we have her on. She follows us on um, Wednesday night a lot. And she mentioned that she was making a quilt that Hancock's of Paducah is going to be collecting quilts um, for victims of the tornadoes. And I thought, well, that's a great um, outreach. And, and for me, I, I guess I don't, I don't quilt. So I appreciate when I receive one, um, when my son Sam was sick, we received several quilts from different organizations and I still have them and we cherish them. Um, Because they were made, we knew they were made with love and prayers for when my son was sick. So if you're a person who, who quilts, who, um, who does that kind of needlework, um, I know that they are appreciated, especially in a time when you've lost, I mean, these people lost everything. Yeah. You know, it's not just like the roof is gone. You've got water damage. It's like, when you look at the devastation, there is nothing there. They've lost everything. And um, quilts are so comforting. There's something about them, you know. They they're not they don't just provide physical warmth. They provide emotional warmth. Um, there's just something about them, knowing they're they're handmade. So, um, I guess you're going to put in the description box about where they can send them. Right. Yeah, I will. So it's it's Hancock's H A N C O C K apostrophe S Hancock's of Paducah. P-A-D-U-C-A-H, Paducah, Kentucky. And um, uh, you send to Attention Tornado Relief, and their address is 3841 Hinkleville, H-I-N-K-L-E-V-I-L-L-E Road, Hinkleville Road, Paducah, Kentucky, 42001. And all the information is laid out on their website, which is Hancocks, H-A-N-C-O-C-K-S, hyphen, Paducah.com. So, uh, yeah, it's all laid out there. But, yeah, if, if you um, are of a mind, you have uh, uh, some in the closet that never get used or are just about finished with one or just want to make one, uh, whatever, quilts and blankets they're taking uh, of all kinds to help people. So, right, right. Um, yeah, it's a great thing. You know, it is. And it's a great way to, you know, during the season, you know, like Christmas holiday season, it, it's nice to – to share that sort of handmade gift or, you know, it's kind of a gift of love. There's, yeah. there's nothing like them when you receive one. So yeah. uh, for those who wonder, you know, I have received them because,
because of my son and I appreciated them. I, I greatly appreciated them. They, they convey more than just a blanket. Uh, it, 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 they convey a love that you just can't describe. So, yeah. So yeah, there's so. an opportunity there to help out, and, and you're right, boy. You know, you see tornadoes. We we both live in the Midwest, so tornadoes are just part of life. Um, but uh, and now I've moved basically <laughs> to the <laughs> northern edge of Tornado Alley. So, um, but when when we when we have tornadoes, when they touch down, a lot of times they don't touch down, or if they do, it's in open fields or whatever, because there's you know just miles and miles of corn and. Uh, soybean fields where we live and so if they touch down you know they'll tear up some corn or something but uh, when they hit a town or a city you know they'll cut a swath and and it's devastating right. for those people no right. question about it but this one that hit in Kentucky just took out everything I mean just yeah. oh geez well I mean I'm, most people have seen the pictures I'm sure mm -hmm. But uh, that's that's a tornado beyond normal tornado, if there is a normal one. And, right. uh, you know, to just see everything, like you said, everything is everywhere and none of it, it's all destroyed. And, right, right. Uh, and, and, and supposedly there went, went, one went through where I currently live before we moved to this house. And it, and it just, it took out the roofs. Um, they, I don't think anyone totally lost their house on this little road. But if you lose your roof, I mean, some of it, you'll get some water damage, but you're not going to lose every single thing. It looked like right. everything was gone, just everything Yeah. Um, in these spots. And it's just, just, it's devastating Yeah. Um, people. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that night, um, living here southwest of St. Louis, uh, the, the siren, the tornado siren went off three times that night within like oh. two hours. So we spent most of the evening in the, uh, in the basement. And uh, the the rain and wind without the tornadoes was, I've only experienced that a couple of times. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's frightening stuff. And then when those tornadoes form and touch down like that, they do damage like nobody can imagine. Um, right, right. I, you know, and I don't know, I, I'm not a meteorologist, so I don't know how they compare to a hurricane. I mean, hurricanes do that kind of damage, too. But uh, structures in hurricane areas uh, anymore, a lot of them built to withstand it. And uh, we, we just don't build buildings to withstand tornadoes because they're so random that right. uh, the, the investment is not worth it. Where like a hurricane season, you know, that <laughs> if you live in those areas, the chances are pretty good that you're going to at least see the fringe of one. But right. uh, uh, for us, it just isn't something we do. So when one hits, especially like that, holy smokes, it's um, terrible. Yeah. yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So there we have that. Uh, Paducah's, Hancock's of Paducah is the shop. And um, uh, help out there if you can. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. So, okay, what what is this? Starting a new project you sent me, Lavender and Lace, Angel of Love. I Didn't you have enough projects started? Um, well, yes, actually, I, I have more than enough projects started. <laughs> but, this, but I was... this is your mother speaking. Don't you have enough projects started? <laughs> yeah, and, and thank goodness my mother didn't, you know, see that I started a new project. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I was, we decorated for Christmas at my house over Thanksgiving and behind my tree, there's a, a wall. It's between our front door and the bay window and we hang a picture there. There's a nail. And so I always change it out and put up a Christmas decoration uh, picture. And the one I have is, is small. It's um, maybe 10 by 10 mm -hmm. and it doesn't make much of an impact. And I was looking at that and I was thinking, I really ought to stitch something larger to go there. Now, I could have pulled one of my two Christmas whips that I do have out, um, which are both larger. I'm, um, I'm not commenting. I'm just listening. I just want that noted <laughs> for the record. I'm not commenting on, yeah. Yeah. Um, one is a, is a cross-stitch piece, um, an older design, and it, it has... Um, but I started it in the wrong orientation. So it means I have to rip 
to start. And I hate I was like, when that ah, happens. I hate I when know. that happens. <laughs> I know. I know. And and it's a good chunk. So of course I, I it just, is. I did, of course, you know, you know. And yeah. then and then the other piece is a needlepoint piece. Um, that was an old group correspondence course, um, and it was um, Florentine ornaments. But again, I don't like the colors I started with. So I think I'd have to go and rip to start again. I was like, eh, no, I don't want to do that. Let's just start something new. <laughs> so, <laughs> why not? <laughs> so this actually, this um, this angel of love is an old lavender and lace piece. It's, if, for those who don't know, it's the one with the bodice full of beads. It's just the whole bottom section is pretty much beaded. Mm -hmm. And I've had it, the piece, I think since before Max and I got married, because I was looking at the, the little tag on it, and it says from Ginger's. Well, Ginger's is in Austin. I think Ginger's is in, was in Austin, Texas, if I'm not mistaken. It uh, was an old needlework store out there. So that's a couple of days ago for you. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, All right, three days, three days. We'll go with three just, days. Uh, just three days, three days. I haven't added that long. And I thought, I have all the threads. I have the beads. Um, my linen, for some reason, had holes. Well, it was Lugana. Um, had a holes in it. And I was like, oh, shoot. So I had to get a new piece of fabric for it. But I thought, no, I'm going to start this. This is the, I think it's the oldest piece I actually have. that I've, And I still wanted to stitch it. I have gone through my stash a few times and said, okay, I, I really am never going to stitch this. And I've gotten rid of things. But this one always, like, I always kept because I always loved it. And mm -hmm. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not getting any younger. Um, I might as well stitch this. Now, I know it'll take me two or three years to complete. I, I know it will take me a long time. But I needed something Christmassy to do. And so I thought, oh, that, that angel, she'll be nice behind the Christmas tree. Well, how festive of you. <laughs> <laughs> how crazy of me. That's really the truth. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to use festive this time. Festive. Festive, mm -hmm. festive. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, and and I I don't I haven't done a lot of lavender and lace pieces. I, I think actually, I, or or mir mirabilia. I think I, I equate the two. I, isn't the same? One was a mother, and what was the? Daughter? Yeah, there's. Sure. Yeah, I think there's some relation there. I don't follow that world, but um, I think yeah. there is some relation or tie-in. Yeah, I agree. Right. And and I've only actually I think I've only done one other of their type of pieces but i i like them i think they're especially some of the older ones i think are especially beautiful um the she's got a couple of old santas that are very um i think they were different they were different than anything else um on the market at the time and um so i love her designs those those older older ones that i still have kept i've, I've got the patterns for them and i thought you know now's the time to start stitching these and so I can have them up so I can actually enjoy them on my walls instead of them just being patterns <laughs> in my stash. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll look forward to that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's on my whip go board, so we'll, we'll see it more often. Okay. All right. Well, I'm already changing my whip go board. Oh, oh you are. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, Kathy Andrews, the unbroken thread, uh, when she was teaching at EGA, uh, I sat in on the class she was teaching, the King's Pineapple. And so she was kind enough to send to you and me the King's Pineapple um, so we could do it. Right. So I'm putting that, I'm not sure what I'm going to pull off my whip go board, but I'm putting that on in place of something. And uh, adding that to the activities for next year. So. Right. And so it, have you ever done cruel work before? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, Marga's stocking is cruel work. Yes. It's a oh. kit, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Nice. I'm not just some rookie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know because I knew you started with needlepoint. Yeah. And I was wondering if you'd ever done cruel because I started by doing cruel. Oh, okay. And well, I started by doing those linen claw um, scarf things, 
but that was the next thing I did was frule because those were easy to get and yeah. and cheap, you know, relatively speaking. So <laughs> yeah. I just, I didn't. <laughs> and, and back in those days, yeah, it's important, cheap. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, yeah, especially when I was a kid, you know, working on things. My mom wasn't going to spend a ton of money for me to stitch something. She was right. like, okay, you have an allowance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Spend your allowance. Yeah. Uh-huh. Go away uh-huh. from me. <laughs> I'm trying to put food on the table. Go away from that's, me. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, do you want to eat? <laughs> yeah. Or stitch some stupid, cruel thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, mm-hmm. So you're going to put it on the slate frame. I'm, I'm going. Yeah. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's the thing. Cause you can't just take it and stitch it. Okay. I got to, yeah. you know, now I can't just do that. So I'm going to put it on a slate frame to force myself to learn how to mount a piece on a slate frame. Okay, now I have a slate frame, a small one, that I got from a needle in a haystack because I wrote to Kathy Ray one time and said, I'd like a slate frame. I have no idea. You know, send me one. I paid Uh for it. People who think we get all this stuff for free, wrong. We pay. Full price. Not just not wholesale. We pay like everybody else. Um, so I said, send me, you know, uh, a typical size, whatever typical is. So she's, she did, she says, this is the size we sell the most. And she sent it to me and it's been sitting here. And so I thought, well, I'm putting this King's pineapple on the slate frame. Well, it's not big enough. Of course. The slate frame isn't? No. Oh, no, no. it's not big enough. And so, okay, well, that's fine. That's fine. Then that made me actually do some research on slate frames. And I told Kathy, you know, I'm going to put this on a slate frame. And so she sent me Sarah Humphrey. Is it Humphrey? Nah, forget. Uh, Sent me a link to a video for how to do that because I've never done it. And uh, so, okay, fine. So then this weekend, this past weekend, then I figured out what size I needed. Watched the video. Uh, figure out what size I needed. And so I've ordered that from uh, Needle and Haystack, from Kathy, the frame. And then I ordered the cording to, because she has it all there on the page, the cording to uh, lace the sides. So, you need cording? Hmm? Do you need cording to lace the sides? Whatever string it is. I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Not, not, I guess cording is probably not the right word. Whatever whatever nylon or cotton string, whatever it is. She she has some listed there. I'm not going to research it. Just send me what you recommend. Okay. You, she obviously knows what she's doing. So I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> if Kathy says, I do, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So so that's coming. So um, uh, I'll be watching the video a couple more times. It, it I was I was hesitant to use the one that she sent the first time. Because it just looked like a daunting task to get that mounted on there. Um, and I commented to Kathy uh, Andrews that it did. And she said, no, it's not at all. It's it's not that big of a deal and you really can't screw it up. Oh, okay. Then that gives me a shot, you know, legitimate shot. Right. Right. Uh, and, it, yeah, it doesn't look all that tough to to do. And uh, But then, yeah, the, the King's Pineapple just was too big for the piece that I, the frame I have. So... Um, so that's coming and that, yeah, I thought, you know, I, all right, we're going to, if we're going to do this thing, I'm going to learn something new. So, um, and I don't have any scroll bars or, and I really don't want to use uh, Q snaps. Um, I can't, I can't get excited about those. I used to love those and I just can't get excited about them. Um, so anyway, uh, going to put it on a slate frame and uh, see how that goes. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. And I, I've never used a slate frame. The closest I've ever come was, um, using a set of Evertights, kind of like one, um, to lace up uh, Gay Ann Rogers' piece, um, mm-hmm. the drawn thread sampler. And I remember we had to keep tightening it. You know, you'd loosen it up when you stop stitching, and then you'd, you'd have to re-tighten it, up, you know, before you start it again. Yeah. That's what I remember. And I don't remember it being that hard to set up. I mean, it was kind of like, okay, this is a kind of a pain but it yeah. wasn't it wasn't difficult so i'm guessing that the slate frame would be similar 
Yeah, so. it's uh, you have to sew because it comes with that uh, that heavy webbing on the top mm-hmm. and bottom. So you have to sew your fabric to that, and and then you uh, lace on the sides, and the laces go around the uh, the side bars, the ones with all the holes in them, right? To pull it tight left and right, and then you you uh, the up and down. You just basically use muscle strength to. Uh, pull it tight and then shove pegs and holes till you get it as tight as you can. It's going to be interesting because the little voice in the back of my head is saying to me, this has potential to be, uh, to get the ground cloth so tight that it makes, it, it puts the stitching at a different level of pleasure uh-huh. And maybe I'm going to say I want to do everything on a slate frame. I don't know. I think some people like it that much that that's all they use, right? Yeah. They, cause you, and you like your stuff drum tight. And I, I, do. I don't stitch with my stuff that tight. I realized that because you guys, everyone says, oh, and it needs to be like this drum tight. And I'm like, I never get anything that tight. It kind of, I never have. It's yeah. always got a little bit of give in it for me when I stitch. And I'm, I'm comfortable that way. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I like them. I like them as tight as they can get. Like even my uh, even my sampler on the um, uh, Millennium frame is, uh, I, I crank that thing. I Yeah, I like it just as, as tight as I can get. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I like about the uh, adjuster frames. That I the, the um, right is you can get things so tight, but even them I get tight enough that uh, you can see that I'm stressing the wood, uh, but I don't care. I don't care. I don't want it moving. Yeah. So. Right. And on your Millennium frame, have you ever had it gotten it so tight that it's bowing it? Because it's pretty. You've got a long scroll bars, right? Yeah. I don't know. Let me see. It's sitting right here. Let me just see if it's bowed. Oops. Hmm, might be. Really? <laughs> yeah, it might be. I, I I don't know why I was listening no. to someone. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I don't think you want it that tight. I think you're going to bend your... I mean, because eventually wood will stay permanently bent like that. So I think you're going to want to release it in between stitching sessions. Here, just just a moment while I release the tension. <laughs> yeah, let me just ease up on the ball plate here. Hang on. Yeah, that looks like it's, there. I think maybe that might be better. Yeah, we'll just let it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my, Gary. Oh, <laughs> uh, now I got to take a look at that. I don't really want to bend those cross pieces. No, no, and 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 that's why I was asking because when you said you actually put tension on the adjuster frames, I thought I wonder if he's bowing his millennial frame, yeah. and those, you know, that would be bad. I mean, I and I I know that's one of the things I um, when I work on a long big piece, even if it's um, I don't have my tension nearly as tight as you do yours, I do release the. Um, when I know I'm not going to be stitching on it for a while, like I'll leave it maybe during the day or if I'm going to stitch on it for a couple of days. But then after I'm done, like it's going to go down to the basement and I'm going to pull up another project. I release the, the tension on the, on the fabric every time. Pardon me but. just a second while I check and see if I've actually bowed it or if it's an optical delusion here. <laughs> No, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, good, good, <laughs> good. Oh, but my. that I'm I'm good because I released it. No, all right, now okay, that's a lesson. I'm going to start releasing it every time I stop stitching. Yeah. Because I just leave it. Yeah, I'll I'll be yeah. taking the tension off of that thing. I, oops. I, and, <laughs> oops. Well, and you and, and I know, like, let's say we were talking about you stitching Portafet. Um, right. Um, using a hoop. Right. No. I would guess you're going to take it out of the hoop. Oh, I always do that. Yeah, because I hate those hoop marks. Yeah. Right. Um, 
and the sycamore seed pod is is definitely putting i've got hoop marks all over it's it's already and i i'll i take it out every single time yeah. so it it's getting them but so that's why i'm surprised you don't release the tension on your frame your scroll frame i will be <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. I mean, I I re, I released the tension when I knew I wasn't going to stitch. But if it you know day to day and and a lot of times two or three days will go by and I don't get to work on it, I've been keeping the tension on there. And uh, now I won't be doing that anymore. Um, okay. All I'll right. be loosening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's um, that's good. That's good. <laughs> but oh yeah, ho- hoops. Yeah, hoops. I always take it out. Always. Right. Because, yeah, because those hoop marks, once you get them, it's like they never go away. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping Gene uh, Lee gets the extra threads I need for port fet so I can start that. Because you've been poking away at yours, and that's really beautiful. It is. It, it's a nice. And the sycamore seed pot, I didn't think I was going to like stitching on that fine of fabric. But it's it's nice. It's nice to stitch on. Even on the 53 count. Yeah. 5363, I think it is. Yeah. But. So, all right. So, that, because I sent you uh, uh, one of my multiple pairs of 4X or 5X glasses so mm-hmm. you could see. Are, are you using them or have they not worked out? They did not work out. I, okay. I, I put them on. I have bifocals. So, I put them on the edge of my nose with my bifocals. And I was like, no, I can't see a thing. I can't oh, okay. see anything. And so I took them off and I have some 3.25. And at first I couldn't see the fabric, the linen to stitch with that. So I was put, I taken off my glasses, putting on the fives and trying to find the right spot and, and oh, I don't know, manipulating oh. glasses. But finally I realized what the problem was. It was lighting. I put I oh. have two lights um, and I shine them directly on the fabric and then I pull that hoop close to my face and I stitch that way and it works. So two and lights. I have two lights, one on either side. I don't have a magnifying light. Okay. Um, well, like I don't have any of those. Um, hmm. I just have, I have uh, a lamp that was like a, a floor lamp that we use in the living room. And we Max said, okay, this is the, brightest bulb you can put in this <laughs> this without blowing a fuse and i was like okay and then the other ones uh oh i can't think of the name a uh, not light uh, oh, okay. not light with the led lights and it, it the head swivels and so i just swivel that so it's pointing in the right direction and that works and i can see i can see the threads perfectly now Okay, because you know that it's interesting that you say that because I mean Mary Corbett and many others will say that the first step is good lighting. Mm-hmm. That magnifying is really the second secondary factor. That with yeah, for most things, good lighting and yeah. So once you put and, two lights on there on that fifty three, then right that changed the game. Interesting. It did. It did, and and then the the strongest magnifiers that I had, and I can see it now. I I do it first thing in the morning. I don't, I don't do it when I'm tired. No, oh. um, when my eye, you know, at the end of the day, because I think that would make. It, I think that was what I was trying to do was work on it in the evening. Oh, and it was like I could not focus. Hmm. So okay. Tired eyes makes a difference too. Yeah. I think for me. Yeah. So. All right. Well, it's beautiful. What you stitched is really looks great. So, and that's that yeah. surfing stuff, right? Right. And and I'm going to suggest if people are having a hard time with the, the swa surfing, um, I think Tudor <laughs> silk is. I, the I'm same. going with surfing stuff. But if you want to get fancy and go <laughs> swa surfing, then you just go right ahead. <laughs> I okay. You know, with my pinky up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, but I know they're having problems getting it's the tubes. I think it's, you know, moving from the big, whatever they get it at excess commodities, moving it to the smaller spools. Um, but I think Tudor silk is the right size. And I really think that whole piece would be beautiful in a single color. Mm. 
mm-hmm. um, you know, your favorite, um, like a red would be pretty or a blue would just do the whole thing and a massive amount. Cause it, I mean, with the Swasser fiend, that's a, there's a lot on those spools and you need multiples. I want to say four of a red and one of a purple and three of a gold. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, how much thread are we using? on this thing? <laughs> but I forgot it's a blanket. It's not a, even on the 53, it's, a huge piece. Yeah, still big. Yeah, it's a big piece. Yeah. 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 Well, it's uh so far it looks great. Yep. Uh yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's what Jean said to me when she said why she hadn't shipped the color the threads was it wasn't the threads, it was the spools. I couldn't get the darn spools to put the thread on. So, right. Jeez. You know, it's always always something these days. Right. You know, and, right. and always outside of everyone's control but you know, but the manufacturer of the item. Yeah. And right. even they can't, you know, I'm sure it's a matter of, of we either can't get people to run the molding machines or we can't get the plastic pellets to make the plastic or, you know, you can right. just, you know. Right, right. Uh, or stuck on a ship somewhere. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Yeah, there's two train cars worth of spools on a ship off the coast of California. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> when they oh. arrive, the world will open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, that's got to. Can you just imagine how many businesses across the country are so frustrated and they'll see a news clip with those ships sitting out there and they know the stuff they need is sitting on one of those ships and they can't get it. Oh, right. It's just got to be maddening. Right. Just, right. Yeah. It's here, but it isn't here and it's not going to be here. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and, and nothing is more. What makes me sad is the people, the, the shop owners that are, and it doesn't matter what it is, you know, you go to a shop, a store, and the shelf is empty. You know, there's something, and and I hear I hear people yell at the the poor people working at the store, yeah. and I'm like, you know, it's it's not their fault, people. You cannot yell, right? It's, you know, it's a supply chain issue. You can yeah. get mad, you know, but <laughs> you know, getting mad at this poor person who happens to be working today, you know, yep. No, they got no say, you know, and, and every no. retailer and every in every market is checking mm-hmm. on pending orders daily. You know they are. They want their stuff because oh, yes. they yes. have customers who want to buy it, but there's nothing they can do. Um, no, you know, no, and they aren't making it up. I mean, they literally just can't get the stuff. Um, right. Right. You, know, you, you go to a grocery store these days, and there's these big gaps in the shelf. Same thing for needlework stores, you know. Well, we we can't get it. It's not here. We can't get it. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. And, yeah. and yeah. And and at least uh, someone has said, you know, no one is dying because we don't have right. our right. our swat surfing. You know, no one. No, you know, it, it, find something else to stitch on. Yep. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, that was. And it, yeah. Yeah. And and even with like I if I don't live close to a shop, you know, I know you live closer to a couple, but if. I didn't have it. I think I would go in and find, see if I could find if the Tudor silk was available. Um, there's got to, I think there's something else that's that fine too, besides the Swasser hmm. But I know Tudor silk is and see if I could substitute something else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you didn't want to do it exactly that way and you, and you really felt like you had to start. Right. Yeah. You know, well, that's, you know, that's just it. That was, you know, when, uh, when Gene wrote and said, Hey, I, I, I can't get the threads. It's like, okay. Um, it's not like I don't have eight <laughs> other things laying here on the table that I could be working on. So I'll be fine. Right. Um, right. it's not, you know, for crying out loud. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know too many people who are down to their, their, uh, you know, if they don't have that project, they got nothing. Um, uh, yeah. usually everybody has at least one other thing. So, um, right. yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Trust me. I'm fine. <laughs> Right, right, right. Yep. So um, I had an experience. You know, go back to my studio. Uh, I have that table that uh, I keep free so so I can wheel it into place and use it and have a big surface that I don't have to clear off before I use it. And so a friend was wondering about uh, what thread count of linen to use with uh, with a wool thread. 
And I thought, you know, I, I think it's about 28, but let me uh, haul out my banding sampler, which is 28 count linen. And I had some of the wool thread. Let me give it a try. And it was, I have uh, my working table where I have my stitching stuff that I cleaned off for my video and that now I would have to clean off again. Um, <laughs> and I thought, doggone it, you know, I just want to do a quick test. You idiot, this is what this table is for. And so I wheeled the table over, which, which I have to proudly say was completely void of anything. It was a completely clean surface. Bravo, bravo. And, and thank you very much. And I got out my um, uh, fanny stand hoop thing and uh, cranked the table up because it's adjustable height, cranked it up, and I stood there and loaded up that uh, hoop and did this test for this friend just standing at the table. Because you know, it was one of those where I was going to make like 15 or so, 16 stitches, make a little block. So I could take a picture and send it to her so she could see. You know, I was not going to make a big production out of this thing. Right, right. And I'm standing there and thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's another use for this adjustable height table. I can set up something. And we were talking about this beforehand. As you suggested, I could just get up from my chair when I need to get up from staring at a computer, walk over and stand at right. the table and stitch a length of thread and then go back to my daily work. Right. It, and that would be so, I mean, I hate to say it, but it'd be so healthy. There's, I, I get after my boys, especially who are spending way too much time with their schoolwork in front of computer sitting or standing or just staring there. It just to get up, move in a different position. Yeah. And, and the fact that you can stand and do that, that that's fabulous. And it, and I think it would give your mind a rest too, mm -hmm. your eyes, something else to look at besides that computer screen. I think that's a great idea. And it's, it's something that's easy that, you know, it's not going to require that you figure out, Oh golly, what thread, what thread color am I on? The band sampler is, is the perfect because you already know what color you're using. Right. Right. It's probably, you're, you're doing a lot of repeat patterns. So as long as you've got that set up to go on a, a repeat, you know, so you, you, you stitch one length of thread or maybe you only have five minutes, you stitch for five minutes and you, you're going to make huge progress if you did that. Yep. Well, I think I'm going to give that a try because also, you know, my mission to keep that tabletop clean, if all I have on there is the fanny stand and, uh, you know, a pair of scissors, that's easily moved. So uh, yeah, so I this I think there's yet another use here for this table. I'm kind of uh, semi excited. So um, yeah, I think that'll be great. I think that's a that's a great idea. And and I was kind of was, I was kind of jealous because I was thinking, <laughs> well, is there any spot that I could, you know, because there are times where you do you just have a few minutes and you're like, okay, do I go sit down for a few minutes and sit and stitch? Yep. Well, you know. I don't know if I have that kind of time, but if it was it was right there, you know, just pick up the needle, you know, uncover your work, pick it up, do a few stitches and move on. Yep. That's great. I think that's fabulous. Yep. And, you know, and it reminds me, it's probably been two years now. There was a lady in Texas that we did a show with who mm -hmm. does stand up. Uh, stitching and she has it on her dining room table. And so if like say for instance, she's cooking and something needs to come to a boil, she'll walk into the dining room and stand there and put in a few stitches and then go back. Or if she's passing through and has a couple minutes, she'll just stop and stitch. And she encouraged me to do that. And I was always going to do the stand up thing, but it was never, there was never a convenient way to do it. It was, right. it was going to take, it was going to be an, another project. And so now it's very convenient for me. So, um, oh, I wish I could remember her name. Of course, we weren't going to talk about this, so I didn't look up her name. But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so she, she just had it. I thought she had it knocked. I mean, it was right there. It was at, it, from the description she had. It was a place where she passes by all the time. So, you know, in and out of the house and doing things. So, it, 
But by golly, I, I think this is worth a try here. Um, yeah, I think so. And it'd be, I know Gayan Rogers suggested at one time, she says, okay, you think that just by doing that, just by stitching two minutes or five minutes or one length of thread, you're not making any progress. She said, take a picture one day, but let's say you start this project on, or you say Sunday, Sunday's generally a good day to start something like that. And then the following Sunday, take another picture and compare those two photos. Mm -hmm. And you'll be amazed by how much you get done when you just take those couple of minutes every day yeah. to work on stuff. Um, it, it really allows you to see how much just a little time um, gets you when you're stitching. Yeah. Well, I've got to give this a try because I really would like, I mean, this banding thing, well, it's, it was my travel project, and these days there's no travel. And right. it, it looks like if I make one business trip next year, uh, I'll be surprised. So now this thing is sitting not getting worked on. So this is a simple um, – because, you know, I thought about taking it downstairs when uh, when Mark and I, uh, we like we record Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. We like to watch those um, those two every day. And so we'll, that's one of our things in the evening is to sit down and watch those two shows uh, recorded so we can fly through the, the commercials. But <laughs> Right, um, right. <laughs> uh, but I've thought about taking it downstairs, but then I can just see if I do that I pretty much then end up building a little nest down there and that's not, no, that's what this room is for. So, right. Um, right. I, I just didn't want to do that. And, uh, but yeah, I think so. I think this is, um, uh, worth a try. Yep. Right. Right. Yeah. Hey, and I have, I have a question. Okay. Um, so we're taking a break from recording for a couple of weeks at least. So right. what are you going to do to kind of recharge, your creative battery over that time? Well, the first thing will be to actually stitch. <laughs> you know, that, 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 because, uh, uh, because, you know, a lot of, a lot of my uh, free time and that's in gigantic air quotes is consumed hunting down people to do shows with and doing research and uh you know setting those up i mean it, it takes quite a bit of time so uh like for instance sunday i had football on and i was uh, it was an opportunity to be to stitch but i was hunting for new people to interview okay. and while well, the football game is on you in commercials i'd hunt and uh, and then one of the people that were recording this week i was doing research for them and uh, so it takes up time, which I'm not complaining. I enjoy doing it, and really, uh, I mean, we we have a great time interviewing these people. So there's no complaint there whatsoever. But it does, you know, there's the stitching, and I can't really get to it. So I'm, yeah, I'm going to do stitching. I've got a list of movies that I'm going to watch, and I'm going to do stitching. And the fact that I we, now we'll have several recorded ahead of time, so there won't be any pressure to find people to get, you know, to fill those Sundays in January. So there'll be a, a time to just not have to do it. And right. uh, so that, you know, that'll be helpful too. Yeah. Right. I, I was just wondering, cause it, it seems like everybody needs to refill that bucket, that creative, creative bucket. And I was just wondering um, what you were doing to, to fill that because it seemed like you've been awfully busy. You've got, you know, your day job, your the magazine, right. you're prepping for doing um, the sampler magazine. And then I know we, how much time the podcast takes. Right. Um, and I was right. just wondering, I was like, okay, one of these days <laughs> <laughs> he needs something, he needs something just to kind of, to refill that bucket. I feel like. And, and yeah. I think if you, if you don't, then I think the other areas suffer. Um, yeah. you, you, the podcast, the, even, I, I don't know your technical magazine, but, um, even preparing for the, the sampler magazine, cause you, you need to, you need to fill it somehow, you know, right. fill that, um, creativity. Yeah. Well, that, that was one, uh, I mean, I was the one that canceled the thread talk tonight, uh, wrote to Kathy and asked her if she'd mind if we just moved it to January. 
because uh, mentally, yeah, I, I just I need a break. And uh, when you have a guest, you know, there's a certain amount of preparation that has to go on that if it's just you and me and Jennifer, we don't have to do that. And right. uh, so I, you know, I, she was kind enough to say, yeah, no problem. Um, she, she actually said, I understand. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, you just get mentally tired. And, right. uh, yeah, and then things start to, to suffer and, and all the way around. And so, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, need a, need a, just need a break from all of this uh, the constant preparation because it's, you know, you, you, to do three shows a week takes, I mean, even to do these Wednesday shows, uh, like you send me some things to talk about. You know, I have some things to talk about, and then you got you got to put together a little list and then record it and then uh, got to fix up the file and make a video, and you know, it all takes time. Right. And upload it and then post it, and you know, all of that takes time. And, uh, don't, you know, again, not complaining. I thoroughly enjoy doing it, and people appreciate it, so um, uh, more than willing to do it. But, uh, it, yeah, there, there reaches a point when, especially three shows a week, where it just it needs to stop. <laughs> right. Okay. Time out. I need, yeah. I need, you need a little time, a little, a little breathing space. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I know I, I appreciate I, I, being part of the team. It, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, but I appreciate it. I, I realized I was going through some of the floss tubes I watch, you know, FiberTalk has been consistently doing at least one show and always and generally more doing three shows or more a week for years now. Yeah. And um, that's that's a high level of commitment. And uh, I I appreciate it. You know, I I've I've learned so much from um, listening to Fiber Talk and and being a part of Fiber Talk and. I just appreciate it. I think it's, it's a great service. We, uh, you know, you especially do, I think I just kind of tag along for the ride, but it's, it, you know, you offer so much to the community and, um, I just wanted to kind of thank you on air. I, oh, I, I okay. think you do a whole, I, you do a, you do a huge amount and I, and I know we appreciate it. I hear it from other stitchers that I, that I've talked to that they appreciate um, what fiber talk has done over um over the years and really to the needle for the needlework community and um just thank you thank you for the time you put into this oh well thanks um i mean i, I thoroughly enjoy it you know i i figured by now because what was it cindy said we're coming up on five years she did the research january would be the <laughs> the fifth year wow um which I, I i've lost track you know whatever um we should probably do something to acknowledge that but uh um, yes, it, it's just fun. I, I enjoy it. I don't uh, right now. I, yeah, I just need a mental break, but I, it's not like I get tired of doing it or I'm sitting there going, Oh, I got to do this interview this afternoon. Uh, you know, uh, geez, you know, and then there goes another couple hours. No, it's, and it's so much fun to talk to these people. It's like Cynthia Jackson Sunday. Holy smokes. Oh, yeah. uh, what a, what a treat to talk to her and, and the stuff we learned. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just so much fun. And, and so, yeah, I, you know, and there's always somebody different to talk to with something different to say. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's a great time. It really is. So, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I, I do think we ought to do something for the fifth, you know, for five years being, um, yeah. Doing fiber talk. Well, think of something. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to think of something. I'm terrible at doing that stuff, so um, it'll probably come and go, but we should really think about it. Because, yeah, sometime next year will be our 500th show, too. Um, yeah, yeah. Something will come along or nothing. I don't know. We'll have to put our, our minds, collective minds together. Get Cindy and, and Jennifer and I, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll start plotting something. Okay. All right. All right. But it's, yeah. And, and that is uh, a part of it. I, uh, I've wondered about keeping the Wednesday live shows going because that's a commitment of, um, uh, well, a, a chunk of the afternoon for preparation and right. then the show. 
Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, maybe we should cut back on those or eliminate them altogether. But uh, I heard from somebody the other day uh, telling her life story. And I showed it to Marga. And I said, uh, you know, I was thinking about stopping these Wednesday shows, but there's no way. Because it, mm-hmm. it, it was, for this lady, you could tell it was a high point in the week in a, uh, for her, and, and she enjoyed it. And, I, you know, the next time I think about stopping Wednesday shows, live shows, uh, I'm, she's going to be in my mind. No, nope, we're not stopping it because um, right. for her, that one person, it's worth it. And, uh, um, well, it, you take uh, with Kathy Andrews talking about her breast cancer. How many right. people? How many people have we heard from or seen make posts where that mm-hmm. show had an impact uh, in in what is as one person said, validating her feelings, or mm-hmm. people who had are currently ba- fighting the battle and now have here's how one person got through it. Uh, yeah. Oh man, I you know that's yeah. It, it, yeah, and that was such a moving. Um, show it really was and and i felt like it had had so much to offer you know we're going through we're still going through a tough time with the pandemic um i recently we lost two my my husband lost two co-workers people he knew from work from from covid it hits you it hits you And, and so you've got these raw emotions going on how do you deal with them and seeing what kathy andrews did with her needlework was inspiring. Yeah. You know, cause she didn't just feel her feelings. She said, I'm going to, I'm going to make them put them out there. I'm going to, I'm going to do something with them. And, and it was very moving, very yeah. moving. But yeah, that's, you know, so those kinds of things, uh, you know, the Wednesday show, that's the only way you can do that kind of thing. And, right. and, and, and you know, again, it takes prep. You know, it took prep on Kathy's part to send all the things so that we could do them. She made a, the video for us and right. so on and so forth. But, you know, when you hit, it, it helps people. Even if it's right. just one person, it's it's so worth it. So, um, yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So they will continue. All right. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you know, we have we have so much fun. It's like just like tonight right. when we do stitch and chat. You know, we we never stop at eight o'clock or well no. nine o'clock ever. <laughs> right. You know, we just right. get going. The next thing, the hours over, and it's like yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. just fun. So yeah, it is, and it's and it's always fun to see you know the comments going through. Right. People are ch- chatting about, and then and then to see what you're working on or Jennifer's working on if we in general, we don't get a ton of Jennifer always gets a lot of stitching done. I know you and I don't get nearly (laughs) as much done. (laughs) She's the smart one of the three. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. She's like, she's just happily stitching away. And she posted, she posted the other day, some spinning she was doing. Did we know she spun? No, I wanted to ask you about that. Did you? Okay, know she I'm spun? not nuts. I okay, I'm not nuts. I did not know that she spun, and I thought, well, I must have missed something. So now tonight we got Jennifer. Jennifer. We got to see mm-hmm. your stuff. She's amazing. She I, is. I didn't know she did that, and then she was had this this. What is it? Wo- roving or rover? What what is that stuff? What Wo- is it? roving? Roving. What it is. Yes. Rover, Rover. Yeah. I'm going to go with Rover. <laughs> but that she that was dyed in different colors, and then she was manipulating it and getting purple out of it. And wow, I know, I know. And 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 that amazes me because I've watched people spin, and I know you. It, it's again, it's a tension issue, but yeah, it's, yeah. that is just it's just amazing. It's just amazing. And that we were talking to that was the lady who everyone used to spin because cloth was so valuable Mm -hmm. and I can't remember who that was, but it made me, it always makes me think of that. There was a time when you and I would have known how to spin because we we would have needed to make clothes. Right. And and now it's just one of those amazing art forms. Yeah. I love seeing people. I love watching people spin. Yep. Well, we're going to, we're going to, 
Hold Jennifer's make- feet to the fire tonight. We're going to see just what, <laughs> if nothing else, what she's been spinning. I did not know she did that. So, all right. No. Okay, I'm not nuts then. I didn't miss something. If you didn't know and I didn't know, then we didn't know. Okay. No, she just didn't <laughs> tell us. Keeping secrets, Jennifer. All right, all right. So we got to see that, Jennifer. Well, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. So anyway, yeah, it's uh, they're all of them fun shows to do, but a break is in order. A break is in yeah. order. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right, that's going to be it. All right. I'll I see you tonight. So. Okay, thanks to everyone for listening, and whatever your holiday is, uh, happy holidays, and uh, Beth and I, it's Merry Christmas, so Merry Christmas to all who do that. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Yep, and we'll be on tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, on the Fiber Talk YouTube channel, and that'll be it. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. (laughs) 